I think this is a sort of a fun lecture, but it's really about how committed are you as a FACO surgeon to learning this procedure. And so you're gonna find out in this next lecture, we're gonna all find out. So first thing is I need everybody to get their phone out. <clears throat> and look at this slide here. This slide um, is the way that you're gonna interact with this. We're gonna poll everybody and we're gonna see how we're all answering right live here. So there's two ways to get um, connected with this. You can text, the number you text to is 22333 and you text the word global site to 22333, and that's the easiest way to do this, as you can answer doing just by texting. And it will send you something back that says, yes, you're connected for texting. Or you go to that website, pollev.com slash global site. You can do either that. So everybody get connected here, and please answer those questions. Uh, so let's, let's, let's see if we can get this one. We'll see some answers as soon as um, somebody answers. It doesn't look like anybody's answered yet, but... Uh, I'll give a few more minutes. And once you get connected, if you're texting, just put A, B, C, or D and send it, and that will get your answer there. Is everybody catching on? Does anybody need some help with getting connected? Now, if you're online streaming, if you're watching live, we'd, we'd encourage you to participate in the live streaming. We want this to reflect everybody watching live. If you're watching it delayed, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I suppose you can answer. Actually, it will add to our poll, but I don't think you're going to see that poll because the poll will go with our lecture. So um, I think it, only if you're, if you're live right now online, you can do that as well. So if the Dean McGee people are live, go ahead and answer that. I'd like to see some residents. I don't see any residents here um, so we'll see if any of the Dean McGee people are watching right now. I don't know. Um, but there were some other residents, I believe. So right now, it looks like we have 60% experienced surgeons and, uh, and about 30% um, are early in practice. No residents at this point that are online or watching. Oh, here we got. We finally spoke to the residents here. The, <laughs> they're coming through 6% here. And, and uh, I'll give 10 more seconds here to get your answers and get, get logged on there. All right, now this is just a fun exercise. So for this one, just type in your two-digit code for your state. Uh, or if you're on, the, on the, the thing, just put in all caps. Or, or put it, you can type it if you want. We'll just see where we're representing. This is kind of a, cloud, a word cloud. This is, shows the, the power of this app. So... It's like the, the most people are from Texas here so far. All right, all right, let's move right into the lecture. That, wasn't, that was just fun. So this lecture is about how do we learn M6 while doing FACO. Does anybody think you can learn M6 while doing FACO? If you think you can learn M6 by doing FACO, you do, really? All right, we're gonna find out. I think it's, it's a challenge, and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna challenge us in this lecture that it's something that we all have decisions to make with our own patients, and so this is, this is sort of the question. Well. You know, people don't understand. They go, you're an eye surgeon. Well, can't you do cataracts? We just need you to come down to Haiti and do a bunch of cataracts. You're, you're a great surgeon. People don't get that concept. Uh, even general surgeons don't quite understand why these ophthalmologists are a little bit, we seem limited when we are good phaco surgeons. Um, why is it hard for active surgeons to learn a new technique? Um, and and the, the other question, why don't you just start doing M6 instead of FACO tomorrow on all your patients? Is anybody willing to do that in the US? We, we feel like, look, I can't practice M6 on my normal 2025 cataract patients. That's what I'm, you know, how many people are operating on 2025 glare patients nowadays in, in the US? That's a common thing. And so those are our paradigms that make it a little difficult. So I'm gonna just make some suggestions of how to use your current cataract skills to smooth your transaction to M6, because there is the transition that we're talking about. And 
the paradigms we have for FACO, really, we, we're used to thinking about the small incision getting smaller, a very stable chamber. Back in the days when I trained, the FACO machines weren't that great and you had your chamber was fluctuating, but now these chambers are stable, so we're not used to that chamber being any different. We're used to clear corneal incisions. Um, and we are not willing to rock the boat. Raise your hand if you're not willing to rock the boat. When something works, you want to do it. I, that's me. I mean, I'm going, I, I, I'm a plastics guy. And when I do cataracts, I want to do it with my eyes shut. I want it to go smooth. I don't want to have to think about it. I don't like to change anything. Um, so, so really, that's, those are the paradigms. So what is your standard phaco incision? So here's your next test. Do we have uh, clear cornea, near clear scleral tunnel? Or are you predominantly a femtosecond incision? Wow, so far 100% clear cornea incisions here for, for uh, and John, you can answer, you know, you should be, okay, there we go, John's down there, scleral tunnel, yeah, good. So it looks like we're still, most of us are clear cornea surgeons that we're talking with here. Doesn't look like we have anybody that's predominantly femtosecond. All right, so why is it so hard for phaco surgeons to learn M6? Well, I think there's a number of really reasons. First of all, that incision is very different. We're talking about completely different dynamics, and it's all about the tunnel, according to Glenn. It's about the tunnel, it's about the tunnel, it's about the tunnel, and we don't learn the tunnel. We're not used to a large capsule opening. We're, we're trying to get five, five and a half, six. In M6, we're talking about extending, we're talking about getting seven millimeter capsule rexus or eight millimeter capsule rexus, or these can openers or these scary looking V things. Um, we have to prolapse that nucleus. We actually have to pop it out. How, how often do you pop it and you go, ooh, 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 get back in there, get back in there. So that you want that thing to be right in the bag. We're not used to delivering. This is like obstetrics. I mean, it really is because you got this baby that's coming out and its head is larger than your wound and you have to slowly deliver that baby out of the, the cataract wound. The pressure dynamics are completely different for a larger incision. We, we recognize that. And the nice thing about M6 is that it's not like old Eki where those pressure dynamics were terrible. You were at risk for a, a choroidal. And in M6, in theory, you're, you're less risk because the chamber is more stable. Um, and certainly when you use the side port for your Simcoe, you're stabilizing thing. We're not used to manual cortical removal. And um, the lack of regular practice, we just don't do it. But the number one reason why it's so hard for phaco surgeons in the US and Western world right now, the number one reason is because in, with M6, we're removing a cataract. With the US FACO, what are we removing? Sometimes we're removing a lens blemish, right? So really, it is a, it, there's a lot of differences. And when you get to one of those where you go, this is a cataract, actually, you're very thankful when you know M6, as we've been discussing. So I'm going to show you four techniques. And I'm going to propose these as ways. And you have to ask yourself, are you willing to do this? And we're going to find out if you're willing, because of course we're going to poll. So let's start uh, with number one, uh, harm-free technique. I'm proposing this as a harm-free technique. But it does rock your boat, so you have to keep in mind. So number one, start using your cystotome during FACO. Um, I'll show you. I, I don't know. For some reason, I always thought cataract surgery was a little bit boring. So um, the hardest part in cataract surgery was the capsule rexus when you're a resident for me. Once you get that step down, the rest was pretty boring. And, and so I've always held on to the cystotome because it's like the only challenging thing in the case. And if you use the Utrata, it's way too easy. And so I've said, I want to do cystotome. So I always do cystotome. And I'll tell you why I think this is a good technique. So let's just take a look. Here's a case that I did in the US. And um, we'll just show you here. I'm making my, it's a little bit of a smaller pupil, probably five and a half millimeter, I'm not sure. but uh, let me see if I can speed this up a little bit. So we put viscoelastic on top of the cornea. And it uh, looks like I'm still making my side port incision. So here's, here's what I'm challenging you to do. This, this is the tip. So when you're ready to do your capsule rexus, how many, you, well, we'll ask that question in a minute. But basically what we want to do is start your capsule rexus using the cystotome and finish it with the cystotome. Do the whole thing uh, with it. You, you, the, the skill set that you get is very important 
for doing your can opener and whatnot. So even though you're still doing a capsule exercise, it's not the same as a can opener, that skill set is going to be important for you. I, my challenge for me is when I do a cataract exercise surgery is not to use the Utrata. The Utrata I only use if I get into trouble. Uh, so that's, that's how I, my paradigm really for doing that. So that's, that's the number one uh, challenge is start using the Cystotome during FACO and use the Utrata only for rescue. Number two, um, I'm going to challenge you to consider, if you're a clear cornea, which most of us are, starting to try a scleral tunnel and use a crescent. Start learning how to do. Now, you, you can do near clear. You can do just a small little tunnel, but make your little three millimeter or whatever tunnel and start practicing with your crescent. You can do this. Look what it says on top, harm-free technique. So we want you to be able to practice, and it's about doing regular. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, challenging that if you're a clear cornea surgeon, and you say, hey, I am motivated. I went to that course. I want to learn M6. You need to be committing to think about doing something regularly in your own practice that you can do that actually helps your skills. Because if you come to a course and you go once a year, it's different than if you're you know, thinking about what are the skill sets that I need and why is it so hard for phaco surgeons. Uh, tip number three. Now, this is a little bit of a scarier one. You may not think it's harm-free, but you know if you're a little more aggressive with your hydro dissection, you can flip that pole up. You want to be a little, learn to be a little more aggressive and see what it takes to get that, that nucleus because it's different dynamics. So this is a little bit, I, I recognize it's a little bit riskier one to ask, but I'm, I'm asking to think about flipping your nucleus up. You can always put it back down and then do your FACO. And you're fine with that. Everybody following where I'm going with this? All right. And tip number four, how... Risky is it for you to put that automated IAA and get a Simco, get a good Simco, get one of the Cropsy endorsed Simco, Simcos from Burundi, and um, he um, and and then and do your automated IAA. Personally, I think the Simco is safer. It's slower, but it's safer. And boy, we have a great um, you know time. There's plenty of cortical removal, so you can do that and safely. I mean, if you break capsule or something sometimes right at that point, what do we do? Well, we get out a small little instrument, you know, like a J-hook or something, and just go manually. Well, the Simco is just as safe for that, if not safer. So the Simco is a very safe step that is, a, again, a harm-free thing. So here we go. Will using the Cystotome to complete the capsule rexus harm your patient outcome? Who thinks that it's high risk? Who thinks that it's medium risk? And who thinks that it's low risk? And again, this is your patient, not on the mission field, but in your practice in the U.S. Everybody have a chance to answer that? Is anybody using the, the website versus the tech? Is anybody using the website? No? Everybody's texting? You're using the website. Is this working okay? Good. Okay. The website's actually pretty easy because it just gives you three options. You click on it and you do it. So, all righty. Next, will using a scleral tunnel instead of a clear cornea harm your patient? Somebody thinks it's a higher a higher risk to use a clear uh, to use a scleral tunnel. I'm talking about even just do a short clear, a scleral tunnel. Uh, you're just going back a little ways. You don't necessarily have to lengthen that wound. Um, you can you can go back. I I did scleral tunnel standard for FACO for the first ten years of practice. And in fact, when I started doing clear cornea, I, I looked at these people post up. I go, wow, they got this incision way the heck you know closer. And I think the thing that you do like about clear cornea is that you feel like you're on top of the nucleus when you're going down to the skull. But if you're if you're too far back, you feel like you're working from a distance. That's you know. So you do have to take that into account. All right, let's go to the next one. What's the chance that prolapsing the polar nucleus will alter your outcome? What do you think on that? It's like medium risk is slowing, it's, it's going down there. <laughs> so, good. All righty, and the last one. Will using a Simco cannula for cortical cleanup increase the risk of complications? 
And I'm, I'm not suggesting necessarily that you do the entire cortical cleanup with Simcoe, but you may. You may not have your patient scheduled where you have an extra three, four, or five minutes to do the Simcoe. You may need to do that. But at least start. Introduce the, the Simcoe in the U.S. It's, to me, a very low risk, and it looks like the majority of you agree. 89% say that's a low-risk technique. So here we go. Now this is where the rubber hits the road. I am willing to commit to incorporating one or more of these steps routinely during FACO. I don't see the, yeah, hold on, let me see what happened to that, let me, let me, it's locked, okay, hold on, let's unlock it, there we go, somehow the pole got locked, I'm glad I'm not seeing any B's so far, that's good, Roger's going to exit you if you're a B. We have a bouncer. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, good. I'm, I'm glad we have honest people here. So, All right. All right, we're going to move on here, if I can, somehow. All right, and so just to finish up this little quick fun lecture, things you could do, but probably you won't want to do, and these are things that uh, some of us that have a uh, you know, high-risk challenge to say, yeah, I, I'm willing to do this. I did those four steps that Pletcher recommended. Um, a larger capsule rexus. You may not want to do that. You may, you may want that you know, capsule to be on top. So I'm not recommending that necessarily. Um, a can opener capsule rexus. Now, believe it or not, when I trained, that was standard. A can opener capsule rexus. That's what we did. We just didn't do uh, curvilinear capsule rexus. And that was in 1994, basically. So, um, but that was standard. And everybody did that. And there was, it was a good... I mean, it really is not as high risk as we think, but that's something I, I think is going to be, I'm not pushing you to do that. Um, and then lastly, the last part, I want to talk for about uh, 45 minutes about using femtosecond skills to learn M6. And here, here's the femtosecond surgeon who wants to learn M6. So, all right. Thank you.